Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be drawing a cute silk bee. So follow along as I show you step by step how we do that. Alrighty, so I got this photo of Pixabay. It's a silk bee, so it's quite a bit hairier than, than the bees that I know. So I'm not sure in which region you find them. But it was pretty cute, so uh, I figured, why not? Let's draw him today. So go ahead and follow along. So if you are a patron, you can go and download the, the reference material for this class. Um, I'll pop in the, the link to my website in the description. And it's also at the top there. So there's the, the color photograph. There's the grayscale photograph. And then there's a sketch template as well, which you, you can go and use if you prefer. So today I'm going to be working from the from the guy, grayscale version. We'll work from this guy here today. So let's do just a little bit of planning before we go ahead and, and start start drawing. With something like this, it's quite interesting because you don't have real edges. Can you see here? The only real sharp edges is this back area of the body over there. And then even the like the legs and stuff, it, there's quite a few little places where you can't see the edges. So that's going to be quite interesting. Here yeah, we do have an edge there, but as you can see, it's not solid. It's sort of hidden or... or um, yeah, semi-hidden behind all these hairs and things. And the top over there is hidden behind the um, behind the wings. So it's going to be quite interesting getting that. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll establish the edges and things that we can see. And that way it will help us later on when we're doing these undefined edges to, to judge them better. So I have just sketched this out here with an HB pencil. So let me bring that guy up. Then you can see which pencil I'm using. And then I'm just going to use a sheet of transparency underneath my hand. It's quite hot here today, so I don't want to um, dirty or get the the paper damp or anything like that. Right, so and I think I'll let's start with a, a round point HB pencil. So you can see if I'm using a green pencil, then it's an HB. If I'm using a blue pencil, then I'm using a B and so on. So that way you always know which pencil I'm using. So literally we can just start anywhere. Start anywhere. The easiest place is to start at the easiest place. <laughs> The easiest place that I could see is the these little feelers here on the on the end. And I'm just gonna really rough color them in. N not pressing hard or anything, so that I can erase at any time. The idea is just to establish a few of the major features. That's going to allow us to quickly add and judge all the other stuff. Of 
Because what I want to do is, if I've got these guys solid, then we can come in with a cloth and quickly lay in some of the base tonal values and stuff. And that should get us going reasonably quick. And with these guys colored in, then they should stand out and not get lost with the with the base tonal value that we're going to lay down. Do you have the silk bee that in your area where you live? Let me know. So you can see I'm coloring it in quite, quite rough. Not worrying too much about getting things perfect. Or tonal values are nothing. Alrighty, so that really was the easy bit, say. The next easy bit is here, this, this tail area. So let's just... Roughly color in these guys. So you can see this tail area is Also got shorter hairs on it. So I think what I'm going to do is let's color it in like this Sort of following the um, The angle That those hairs are are in And I'm sticking inside my sketch lines. So it's quite a quite a neat little line at this point. As we go along and we add more information to this area, then we'll rough it up and make it look more more natural, more realistic. But I think you can see it's it's just taken us a few minutes we've already got a good a good feel for what goes where just with these few little contrasts in there so that's great that's helped us a lot hasn't it that's pretty cool and then here i'm seeing a little dark area so i'll maybe just plot that in over there then there's a lighter area something like this in this vicinity. I don't think I'll color in that whole eye because we're not going to, we, we won't be coloring in or anything adding um, tonal value around that. So just that little edge is good enough. Here, let's get ourselves just a, a light feeling where this, the head, the darker bits on the head must go. So I'm coloring it in really lightly, awfully light. And maybe there, I can just start giving myself an idea where that little darker patch is. That'll help me judge the rest. So I'll just go over there a few more times just to mark him. But I'm not pressing hard. Everything here is super soft to the pencil. And this is the thing, when you're starting out a new drawing, you, you you don't know what you're doing yet because you've got a blank paper. So you're going to start somewhere. So I always start with whatever looks the easiest and get that done. And at least it gets you started. And then it's, okay, I've done this. What can I do next? 
and then you add a, another little bit of information, and then another little bit of information. Okay, this here is also quite dark, so I'll s just add a few little extra layers of graphite there just to solidify him. And let's see, this back of here, it's not perfectly um, solid, it's a little bit out of focus. So I think with us bringing it in with an with HP pencil, should be good. Now by adding just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, the next minute you're starting to, to visualize what your drawing looks like. And then from there it becomes kind of easier and easier. But I think the important thing is don't start off with trying to get tons of detail and stuff in. You don't want that. You just want some basics. If you get the basics, and, and your basics is usually tonal values. If you can get those tonal values sort of established, then it's easy to work in your details out of those tonal values. Right. Let's get that maybe a little bit darker. And then we can, here, here, there's that little dark, little dark area. Maybe I'll give us a, an overlay. Like that. Can you see there's a little dark area over here? Let's sketch that little dark area in there as well, just to establish him, then he won't disappear. He has a bit of a roundness over there. Yeah, I think that's... That's good enough, eh? And there, there, there's that little back leg. Let's just fiddle a little something in there. It's completely out of focus, but if we just establish his position. Then we are A for away. Alrighty, so now to start sketching this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a sheet of paper and then just a, an 8B pencil or so on. So this is just an 8B graphite stick and just cover it with graphite so that we've got some loose graphite on here. Then I'm going to take my cloth. This is just a piece of t-shirting material and rub it over here. So now what you've basically done is you've picked up that graphite and it's now sitting on your cloth. And now we can use the cloth to lay in some really quick tonal values. So I'm going to wor be working on this top area. So I think we can pop him over there for now. So I can see that tonal values darkest here by those tentacles or feelers. Because they feel as they're not quite tentacles. So let's pop that down. This little darker bit of there. And then it goes lighter outwards. So we'll just use just a circular motion. Just to lay down some graphite. Now be careful that you don't lose all your lines as you do. So if you're scared of that, as you lay down there, just work, take maybe your, your, your Tombow eraser and just work in some of these edges again, just so that you can see them. And that way you're not losing anything and have to figure it out afterwards otherwise all your template work was and your sketching work beforehand was for nothing right and obviously at a point your cloth is going to run out of graphite so just recharge him and you can go over the line into the into the b that's why you coming in and just making sure you're not losing your your lines. 
by doing that or if you need to like here with the wing you can darken up that line now a little bit more now that you have some tonal value down there around it So I do like to use a circular motion so that at the end of the day you don't get like a halo around the around the bee when you're doing your background. Because that's not, not going to look natural. Eh? You want your background to look like it's going in behind. Yeah, that's cool. I think let's let's add some here at the bottom as well, because we've you do have now little areas of of the background shining through there by the by the legs, or between the legs and area over here. So now as you're laying this graphite down and you're bringing in these little hairs again with the eraser, that also tells you whether you've got the, the background dark enough because now you can see whether these, these marks of yours are, are visible. Okay, that's cool. So I think let's maybe go over to a... Yeah, what the heck, I'm going to go all the way down to a... A 6B. So there's, there's enough information there now. Let's start at one point and start adding in some information here. So the easiest bit is this. So I think let's start at one point. I'm right handed, so I'm going to start here on the left and I'll work my way that way. I think let's go to that camera over there. So you can see these little feelers aren't uh, solid. They aren't perfectly dark or anything like that. So I'm just going to sketch in that outline. Like that here, we've got some hairs coming over there. So I'll stop in that vicinity, just over here. So you can see I'm sort of coloring it in a little bit here, a little bit there. And that way we're going to get just a, an uneven tonal value across this guy. Let's maybe even go to a darker pencil. I think I'm going to go to an 8B. Now we can use the 8B just to fiddle in a few little darker patches on this guy. So again, I'm just coloring in a few little random places. Following the photograph, but not, not slavishly, because have you really studied the feelers on a bee? <laughs> I haven't. So... Chances are the person that's going to be looking at your drawing doesn't hasn't either. So, let's go back to the the eight B. Oh, the four B. Sorry, and let's just color this guy in. Also, just quite rough. Here and there, little patches and so on. Just to get that uneven tonal value. 
So here and there on this one, I am seeing a few little highlight things. So we can leave them. Just use your, um, your Tombow and just drag out a few little highlights so that when you go to the, the 8B, you can put that, just leave little gaps. Wiggles and squiggles on either side of that and through there. And that's going to give you that uneven little highlight that you've got on this, this guy. That wasn't too difficult, eh? Pretty straightforward. All right, so the next easiest thing is the eye. So can you see how I'm starting with the easy stuff? And we'll go harder and harder because we don't know how to do all these hairs and things yet. So do the stuff that we do know because the, the eye is just shading. So I think let's go back to the 4B. And let's just get this guy. Basically shaded in. So there's quite a few little tonal value changes and stuff in that eye there. It's quite darker like over here. comes around it's dark over there so I'm going to look for those little tonal value changes All right, now that we've got the edge nice let's just color this guy in with a base tonal value so that base tonal value is basically the lightest color besides now the that little reflection over there which we're going to avoid just block it in with a the lightest, next lightest color. Because you know there's nothing, everything else is darker. So you may as well just color the whole thing in. Like that. And now you can start looking for the, the darker bits. For example, over here is darker. Random little shape over there. Here is dark on this edge over here. There is darker over there. And then from here I'm just going to Gradually fiddle with the tonal values until the tonal values are, are correct. So you've got just getting those in between tonal values right, in other words. And you do that just by adding more or less layers in these areas over here. Once you're happy, you can start pressing a bit harder as well. Is this? We can't quite see what's going on with this little. What do you call this little piece here? That's the thing when you're an artist, eh? you need to know all these funny anatomical terms and stuff. <laughs> when they one day when they run out of doctors, they'll just get us artists to, to come and do all the operations and stuff because we've done all the anatomy. Alright, let's get that little highlight better established there. So I'm going to outline him. Yeah, it seems to be like that. That's close enough. I 
Oh, that should be that should be good enough for now. He's got a little bit of a, a shiny look to him. I'm happy with that. Yeah. What the heck? Let's continue here by this leg. So here's a few little pieces where it's disappearing behind the hairs on the body. So I'm just going to sort of get a, a feel for where they are, but I'm not going to press too hard. We can always come back and just establish them better later on. Yeah, there's lots of hairs and stuff um, on this leg over here. So I think w what we can do is let's put this in using little short flicks in those hair directions. So that way we're sort of negatively drawing those hairs. So make sure your pencil is, is nice and sharp. And that'll suggest those hairs. So look really carefully at those hair directions. Are you going to see actual hairs there? No, no. But with everything else around it, your brain will fill in the details and tell you, oh, you know what I'm, what I'm looking at there is, is hair, those little streaky bits. Okay, this here, does that back leg is well out of focus. I'm just going to lay down tonal value, but I'm not going to press hard. I need to be able to erase all these body hairs that are in front out over that. So what I'm going to do is stick with the 8B and just give a few layers until I can see that tonal value is more or less. And then also while I'm at it, I'm also keeping the outside edges soft so that they look a little bit fuzzy. Alrighty. Yeah, what the heck. Let's do one more leg. <laughs> then we can go back to the other side. We've got some nice information there now. Hey? There's an obvious little rounded bit. I think that's part of uh, a segment of that leg that's actually coming forward. So you now sort of, it's foreshortened and you can just see a bit of it like that. Then there's hairs coming out in this direction like that. Got a bit of a bulge, and all these hairs are coming straight down the leg, so that's great. That makes it easy. So what I'm doing to make sure that my pencil stays sharp is every now and again I'm turning it in my hand. So I'll make a few marks, turn it. Make a few marks, turn it. Make a few marks, turn it. So that way your pencil is sort of sharpening itself as you go along. Just flicks. Alrighty, let's go to there. And let's start getting some of that hair detail in over there. And then we can get at least this reasonably full. So what I can see now, now that I've added these darker bits in, the, the background isn't dark enough in that area there. Can you see that? It goes a little bit darker in this area over here. So I'm going to just 
in this area just work in that darker tonal value there like that and then just fade him out as we go this way I'll just fade him out away from the B like that okay let's check him so we'll grab our Tombow eraser this guy over here and you should be able to give us some nice some nice hairs so can you see what happened now that we've added that tonal value in this darker little edge that we had over there has disappeared a little bit so I'm gonna go with the 8B but super soft absolutely no pressure whatsoever and just re-establish those guys before they disappear on me you don't want them to disappear because then you have to try and figure out where they are so there is a way if you do now lose them there is a way to get them back if you're drawing with, with, with a template then it's then it's easy peasy or a one-to-one -one reference drawing so then all you do is you take your some some tracing paper you put that down and then you just mark a few little distinct places like for example the, the eye maybe a leg or so on and now you can take this and then obviously the the area that that's disappearing on you for example we want to know where that bow over there is now you can take your your tracing paper put those other marks down on their places so that they where they should be like that and I can mark that guy again so what, what I'll usually do is I'll just hold my pencil over there and then I'll move the tracing paper out of the way and my pencil will be in its in its place alrighty so let's start here with these little light hairs so I'm just gonna get their length so I'm gonna flick from the tip of the hair inward So the first thing I'm checking is, do I have enough contrast? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, then it, I'll, I'll have to add more tonal value over there. Make it even darker. You see your hair marks still stay there because they, even though they, they've gone darker, they, they, they're still lighter than the surrounding areas. So can I just flick straight back over those hairs again? There we go. That's a nice contrast, eh? Look how nice they're standing out. So now you know you're good. You're good to go with your your tonal value on that. So I'm going to follow the directions of these hairs. Just flick them in. Every now and again, obviously your your eraser gets dirty, so I just wipe it on my pants. I wear jeans, so I just give a the eraser wipe on my jeans. Let's flick these guys out. There, I think we know, don't have enough tonal value yet. So let's darken up that background. And look there, instantly it stands out nicely. Hey, the minute you get your, your tonal values right. Okay, so here things go darker down there. So we need to basically do a shading in that area over there. So I'm going to take, let's go back to say an HP pencil. Can you see it's light here and gradually going dark in over there? Because from this it looks like, if I look at the eye there, our light is coming from the right to the left. So it's basically coming from the back area. So as this head curls around, this part of the head is casting a shadow on those hairs over there. So we need to darken up these guys. And the way we do it is by adding in 
pencil his instead of erase his. So you basically got a mixture between erase the hairs and pencil hairs. Same with over here. I'm going to flick in those hairs. Just nice flicks. So they're not giving you the, the darker hairs. In between the lighter ones. That goes to there. Alright. So now we've already got a reasonable area plotted in. Let's see if we can get these guys a little bit lighter by raising them. No, they don't want to go lighter. So that's fine. Now we'll just go over to our jelly roll pen. I'll just flick in a few lighter bits. And that's given us some nice sunny highlights there. Okay, here it is not quite dark. So what what we can do is let's take let's take our our uh, graphite paper and our cloth, but I'm going to put my finger inside the cloth like that so that I can work with a smaller area than the whole cloth. Rub it over there to pick up some of that. And now we can darken up this whole area over there. And that will allow us to um, lift out the lighter hairs. So I'm just in that area over there. We're lucky that area is round and so is our finger, so it, it's quite easy to get that that in there, eh? Yeah, that should be fine. That's enough for us to start erasing some some hairs out of that. And I'm also just going to double check my background because I know it wasn't dark enough over there. So it's probably not dark enough quite over there. So let's work him in. Just make sure we can still see our little edge over there don't lose that yeah awesome let's go from here let's start just flicking them in can you see how quick i flick them in you flick them in quickly like this it, it looks more natural and it gives you a more solid um erase as well for some reason Okay, so let's just work on this little head bit. So I'm going to just get these hairs working on those directions. Look very carefully and get these little hair directions right. And same with the pencil. You can also just turn your eraser every now and again. It also helps it appear or helps it helps you work with a clean area for longer okay now we go to the 8b make sure you've got a nice sharp tip on that pencil of yours and now we're going to work from the that little edge of the head and just flick downwards so you've got to follow that line of yours and flick downwards in between these light hairs. And look what happens. That head starts popping out in between the hairs. 
That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, yeah, we've got that dark area over there. So I'll just flick in some really... I'm going to press quite hard there. Here's some darker guys here. In other words, we're just working in the, the correct contrasts. Adjusting the tonal value by adding more graphite over there. Here are some darker hairs also going further up past that head. So I'm going to pop them in over there. Great. Nearly done with that with that face. Starting to look like something already. <laughs> I think while we're there, let's take our, our, our um, jelly roll and add a few little, those little sunny bits. Those sparkly highlights on these hairs over here. Just little dabs. And here as well, just in between there. Can you see there's just little sparkly bits? I don't know where they come from, but... Ah, what the heck, we spotted them. We'll put them in. It's just those little sparkly bits and stuff that always add to the realism. Makes it look like... Makes it look like a photo. Okay, so let's get this darker. So that we can erase our, our highlights. Actually, I think I'm going to take... Go, let's go all the way up there. I can even go all the way up to that... That shoulder area over there. Here's some lovely highlights, eh? Really nice ones. But now, check the different directions. Here they go this way, and there they're going that way. So get those, get those directions right. And they come all the way up to the leg. So just some careful observation here at the moment. And now this hair is coming all the way down from the eye area, all the way down here. They're not as light. Obviously, they're not getting as much sun, eh? They're quite long. And then over here. So make sure you've got a nice clean eraser when you flick over that leg over there. And then there's a few little sparkly bits there, which we can put in with the, with the jelly roll. Is this process making sense? If it isn't, just fire away and ask a question. Oh well, we've added some some tonal value there, so we may as well just seeing as we've got the eraser. Just start adding in a, a suggestion of those hairs while we've got the eraser in our hand. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Back to an 8B pencil. Yeah, in between those hairs, it's really dark. So you're going to go in from the dark, just flick outwards. That, that direction, and a one or two out in that direction there as well. So look what happens. It, it gives you that illusion of depth. If you take your hands, hold them like this, can you see here on the outside, there's lots of light, but there on the inside, there's less light. So that's what's happening. So it's giving that illusion of these hairs are coming up, out, and spreading like that. Just by using these different tonal values. That's all you've done.
Okay, here we can get those nice dog guys in between those hairs. So I'm being careful not to go over the hairs. That should be good there. Here's one or two little darker bits. I don't know what it is. I can't see it's in between those other hairs, but I've, I've spotted it. So I'm going to put that in. Add a few little odd tonal values in between in between there as well, just to make that look interesting. Okay, let's go over those same lines there with the jelly roll, just to get them light. And the, add these few little dips, dabs, and dashes to get them in. Okay, let's see, where do we have some super light here? We'll flick them in. With our jelly roll. Look at that nice little looking in effect we have over there. Yeah, fabulous. Now I think let's go to that that little back area over there. So it's back to the cloth. Let's get same as what we did over here. Let's darken up that tonal value so that we can get this edge over there and give ourselves some place to add some tonal value that we can erase to add those hairs in. So as we do that, this is going to disappear. So I'm just re-establishing that, just darkening that up a little bit. It's quite a funny little piece here, right? Eh? Quite random. That with there with the where the wing comes out. Yeah, so we'll get lots of tonal value over here. Get that nice and dark without losing those little positions of that, that wing bit. Because that's going to be as difficult to see as it is what's going on there. Quite abstract little bit. So to try and figure that one out afterwards is going to be really difficult. We don't want to do that. Yeah, awesome. Let's start getting those little hairs in over there. So I'll start here from the outside and work my way in so that we can establish that. Make sure we're still seeing that nice back. So look carefully, can you see these hairs are going in a different direction there now? And then they change to going straight again. And then as we get here to the back, they sort of flare out at different angles like that. Okay, so now we'll just extend these lines all further in, just by adding more and more little erasings like that. Should go reasonably fast, because we know we know what needs to happen. Just keep checking those angles. Lots of little angle changes here. That's actually sort of curling round. Awesome. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, let's do the same as what we did over there. Now I'm using the the 8B and I'm going from the line inwards in between these hairs that I've erased. And that's now making that that back appear in between the in between the hairs. I always find it so exciting you you're creating all these crazy illusions like this. But it's actually so simple if you think about it. A few lines in between other lines. <laughs> and it looks like you've got all this 
in sane hair detail. But you actually don't. Right, so what's important now is just get, you've got the effect, just get the tonal values correct. Like here, add more of these darker lines in because you want it to look like that back is curling around away from the light. This little area here is darker, so maybe there's just more hairs casting more shadows over there. Or maybe there's less hairs. And you're seeing more of the, the black color of the, the bee's skin over there. That's also an option. Alright, so this area here is, is just insane. You can't really tell hairs, you can't really tell what what. So all we can do there is essentially just copy it blindly. So I think before I do that, let's finish off this little area. Otherwise, it's we have to come back to it, and that would be a bit incoherent. So I'm adding just little dabs and dashes with the with the jelly roll again. Oh, look at that. There's some darker hairs at the top there. Missed that. Let's go with this. No, it's not as dark as that, eh? Let's maybe just use an HP pencil. Let's just flick. Same as what we erased. Just flick down. And that's adding those darker hairs in between there. Quite short, eh? few little hairs in different directions just for just for interest and that's also making these guys more more visible okay I think we'll stop over there because we've got that that wing to contend with Back to the jelly roll. Let's get those nice light guys in, in this vicinity. So everything is all just little flicks at the correct places. And here's these little sparkly bits. So I'm just using little dabs and taps to get them in. Quite unusual. Maybe it's the end of the hair that's now picking up just a little bit of a highlight. Maybe that's what's happening there. There's a few ones over here as well. That's the only thing I can think of. What do you think it is? Why does the little sparkly bits? All right, let's work on that bit over there. So I don't know what's going on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm literally going to blindly copy it. So I'm going to put down my reference like that. Let's maybe turf this guy for a, for a short while. Then I'll show you how I do it. I'll put this guy down there. And because this is so abstract, I'm just going to put my finger in the place that I'm working. I'm just going to just copy and try and replicate the colors and the tonal values and those kinds of things. Am I going to get it perfect? Who knows? I'll get it similar because, as you see, I'm, I'm moving my finger along as I work so that I, I, I can instantly flick between the drawing because that's where my pencil is and the area that I'm referencing because that's where my finger is. And that's where I'm going to get something that's at worst similar. Let's 
and eventually you're gonna get to a point where okay now now I can see that the hairs and things again so that's fine oh see it's darker And there we're back to here again. So that no, there we know what to do. And here's also just some hairs going at all sorts of different directions. I'm sure we can get away with just flicking them in with a pencil. Let's get that tonal value. It's not so light, so I'm just adjusting that. Yeah, I think we've figured it out. Not too bad after all. Let's see. There's also just a... It's got that light area over there, and then there's just some darks in between over there. Like that. Okay, we get that light in over there. And there's a little highlight in that vicinity. There's one or two bits, they're not quite as light as that, but we'll turn them down. And we'll just add in one or two hairs over there, like that. Okay, let's stand back and just see. Does our, does our bee? Look like a bee. <laughs> let's go to there. Yeah, it's gonna look cool, man. See the overlay. Yeah, I think we're we're onto something. And personally, I think that was the hardest bit to do. Of of all of that, it was definitely the hardest bit. Because from here on, it's just the the wings and the and the body and the legs. We've already done the legs. We've seen they're not so difficult. So let's maybe let's maybe let's go to that view over there. And I think what we can do is, let's start here, because this is the easy bit. We'll move our way back to there, and then we'll can do that tie in here between the the wings and the hair and the body and all those bits, because that's now a little bit of a confusing bit again, or a potentially difficult bit. Always start with the easy bits. Okay, so the easiest bit is, let's start with, with dark. And I'm just going to add a few little flicks. Quite close together. Just to darken up. the dark bits so that we don't lose them because we do now need to erase those the hairs that are in the light b area so 
So just by adding, just re-establishing this with the dark, that's going to allow us to come in with a cloth. So it's quite, quite rough. I'm sort of redoing what I did the, the earlier, just to get that. Just to get that same bit darker. Here, I'm just going to get those edges for now. Just in a sketching fashion, not in a solid line, so that we can have that that hair effect. So Vanetta's saying a, a, a magnifier could be helpful in those little tough areas like we had over there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I always ask myself, um, is it going to... Because it's a tough area to look at, it's probably a tough area in general, you know? So the chance of somebody like memorizing or, or instantly recognizing that you've done that area wrong is, is slim because it's so difficult. So the chances are that if you copy it 100%, it's probably not even necessary. All right, so I'm just... Adding some tonal value over there, avoiding the wings, just this body bit, one, one, one piece at a time. So like that there was quite abstract. So you, you could use a, um, a magnifying glass. So I'm just using Flix, same as before. There's nothing different here, so I'm going to just chat as we go. What I is what I am doing is um, I'm just checking the the angles. Can you see they go here, and then as you curl around the body, they gradually start changing angle. They go from there to there to there. So you've got to just keep changing those angles. So back to that little difficult bit there. I always ask myself: Is it is it going to is it an important bit? Do I have to get this accurate? If the answer is no, then I'm not going to bother too much. I'm just going to eyeball it and get it as, as close as what I can. It's probably good enough. So what's handy to do here with this little hair piece is we want these... It's hairs that are overlapping each other. The hairs are just different colors. So you'd have a black hair and a white hair, and then another black hair, and then a white hair, and so on. So I'm going with the, the erasing into the dark, down and up, so that the, the edge itself is not sharp. It's not like a, like a ruler. It's not a hard edge. We want to have these things a little bit organic, a little bit rough. Okay, so here these hairs are going in all sorts of other random directions. The, the hairs seem to be a little bit longer here, so they've been curling down here like that. Then we have all these guys. Longer hairs and slowly curling down. Right. See, there's quite a bit of um, little highlights. I'll ignore that for now. There's always a good candidate for the for the jelly roll, eh? Alrighty. Now look at the tonal values here. You'd expect them to be all the same, but they're not. Here, these he hairs over here are darker, a little bit lighter, and even lighter, and that's just because of perspective. Um, the person that took the photo had to use uh, a very shallow depth of field. So this here is now out of focus, and that's also making it appear lighter. So I'm not going to add too many darks over there. Okay, so now I'm adding these flicks in here, 
But I'm pressing quite hard and I'm going over the light as well. So that it's a... These hairs are sort of just meshing together. As I come here, it needs to be lighter as it's curling around. So I'm laying off on the pressure on the pencil. So there are lots of little hairs that you do now need to scribble in here, essentially. So take your time. Don't rush this bit. I can see there it's a little bit more a harder edge over there. So I'm going less over the line. Make the line less higgledy-piggledy. But here it's still quite higgledy-piggledy. So I'm, I'm going over the line at different lengths. Sometimes I go along over the, over the line with a long line. And sometimes I'll go over the into the white with a shorter line. Okay, as we cool down again, starting to get lighter. So I'm laying off on the pressure on that pencil. This guy is quite a bit broader. So I can use reasonably long strokes. And it becomes quite narrow over there. Remember the marking, these little lines and stuff, they're markings that are unique to this bee. So don't sweat not getting it 100%. Get it similar and you, you're good enough. Alrighty, here's an interesting bit. We have these long lighter hairs over here overlapping in that direction. So we're going to have to, same as what we did by the face and by the back, Click in in between those lighter hairs so that we don't lose those hairs coming down this way. Okay. And then from here we can just continue to to flick them in in that hair fa fashion as before. That's all good over there. And I'm going to get this nice and dark because we've got those lovely little reflective bits over there and over there. So make sure that's nice and dark. Go over them lots of times. Lots of little lines. So you'll still have a hair effect, but it'll be a really dark hair effect. Yeah, awesome. Okay. I think I'll stop over there for now. Let's let's just stick to the body. Let's go to this bit over here. So we have erased hairs over there. So there are now just a few darker bits of body shining out between those hairs in that area. Okay, let's get the edge of the of the body just established. Because it's dark on this edge. Like that, just so that we don't lose his shape and wander off on a tangent. So if you have gone over the edge, just uh, erase him. 
raise what's extra just to re-establish it. Yeah, I think this piece here, those light is are, are still too too light. So I'm just darkening them up. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to take my eraser again. And just because you've gone over there, some of those guys have now darkened up. So I'm just going to add in a few little new flicks. So that's adding extra little highlights here and there. And then I'll take my pencil and I'm going to add just one or two little distinct dark lines in the light. And that's just helping... that overlapping effect. And maybe even, I think I'm going to even just use a f just a few little gel jelly roll flicks here and there inside the light. Don't ever do it. Just a few. That's fine. Here, here's some distinct hairs. So they can they can be put in. Because those are like little detail hairs, eh? So when working the jelly roll, don't panic if you, you find yourself the jelly roll makes it too light. I'll show you now what we do. Okay, and there we've got those lovely little reflections in there that seem to go down in a little bit of a, a pattern. So I'm doing tap, 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 tap downwards like this. And just doing my best to copy that, the shape. There's some more around this vicinity. These all seem to be like bigger dots. So we'll pop them in a bit bigger. Awesome. And where was it? Around here, eh? There's a little lighter bit over there. I see it, so what the heck, I'll put it in. Right, so I've got to leave that to dry now, because you don't want to go over the pen now. So let's start getting maybe these... These legs sorted. So there are quite a few hairs and they're going in this direction. So I'm going to do this hair with flicks in this direction. Or do the leg with the flicks in this direction. Pressing quite hard. So it's sort of the back or the top of the head area. Same, same, same thing. It's not just giving me that lovely little stripey effect inside there. That's going to give that illusion of the hairs. Okay, let's take a look. The hairs on this leg is going along the length, so that's cool. We can just draw the leg using flicks. So all the gaps in between the pencil will represent those leg hairs. I say this is I think this is the first time that I've really drawn an insect. I think I've yeah, we've done a butterfly before in the classes, eh? Alright, 
So I'm going to just um, sharpen this pencil. So while I do that, let's go here. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Alrighty, let's continue down here. Now I've got a nice sharp pencil again. What I've actually done is I've, I've sharpened my pencil on, on a bit of sandpaper. Because you can see I've got quite a long tip on this guy that I've shaved out. That guy goes there. And he seems to have a sort of stop in that vicinity. And then he goes like this. And then he goes there. Then there's that other little piece of the foot sticking out over there. Here's that. The back leg that's out of focus. So same as the one in, in front, I'm going to just really just color him in. Keeping the edges nice and soft. So in other words, more more layers on the front or lay more layers on the inside of the leg, sorry, and less on the outside. Yeah, it's probably just something like that. And that keeps those outside edges sort of just faded and that will make it look out of focus I think that's dark enough cool and then here there's so many hairs actually going over this last little bit of the leg over here just keep drawing him with with flicks Something like that. And there's this last little body over there. So we'll do that the same as what you did with the with the back. Yeah, let's get that tie in over there. So just add a little bit of a little bit of graphite down there again. On all of this. So maybe maybe we'll go to the Maybe we'll go to that view over there for the central bit. You, you know what I'm doing now. There's no, no new techniques at this point. Oh, look at this. The end is in sight. Eh? We're starting to almost get to a point where it's just tying stuff together. Alrighty, here's lots of hairs here. So I'm going to start just flicking them out. So this is again a great candidate for just keeping your finger on the reference. Like this. So that as you work, You can keep your wits about you, and it's easier also to, to judge the, all these little angles and things. I'm going to darken up that little bit of 
background in this vicinity is quite dark over there. Okay, let's flick out these little hairs. Nice little individual hairs. And it's these little overlapping individual hairs here. They're going to tell you all those little marks that you made inside the inside the leg are also hairs. Yeah, these hairs, yeah, they're not too dark over there. That's good. Yeah, there seems to be also a bit of flowers behind this, eh? So we'll we'll lift that out later. Yeah, some dark bits. I think those are, then the hairs come out to here, and then they start catching some sunlight, then they appear brighter. Yes, quite a bit of overlapping here, so there's another little technique we'll have to use over there, so we'll put those hairs coming down this way, and then these hairs coming down this way. So those hairs I'm putting down there aren't quite standing out as, f as much as what they should. So that's telling me that this area here needs to go darker. So I'll just add more tonal value. And now when I lift them out, now they'll be nice and, nice and bright. These ones here are really quite long. Nice long flowing flicks in this area. Comes out sort of like that. Yeah, there's also some darker bits. Okay, let's darken up this. We might as well do this little bit here. Then, we do then that's also done, all these lovely hairs. While we've got the, the eraser in our hand. Keep remembering to check the directions of the hairs and their length. So for example, like here on the end of this leg, these hairs are a lot shorter than here at the top. Top those hairs are definitely longer. Yeah, there we go. That back leg it is starting to disappear into the the rest of everything. Okay, let's get our tonal values right. So back to the 8B. Let's get these little flicks over here right. So here and there, there's little darker bits and shadows in between. So sometimes what you need to do is, let me see if I can... Get a closer view of that. So 
So what you need to do is, in between all these erasings, you're going to carefully darken up little bits. In between them, like that. So can you see what happens? Then you get that effect of, you can see this the hairs that are going this way, and also the hairs that are going that way. That's that's where we were, more or less. Here we have those really light hairs. So I'm going to just make sure that area is light. Then I can bring in the dark over there and the dark on this side of it. And that will make those guys appear bright. Just because of the, the contrasts around it. Okay, now the same over here. We've got that, the body that ends over here. So you're going to do it the same as what you did on the top of the back and the top of the head. Give yourself a little line over there. Alrighty. So it's at this time of the, the drawing when you you're starting to see the end is in sight. That's when you start getting really excited about the drawing. Because now you know that heavy concentrating and stuff is, is, is gone now. You, you've done that. It, done and dusted. Now it's just the fun bits. Like increasing contrasts and tonal values and, and fiddling with those kinds of things. Right, let's do that. The wings there. So the wings are semi-transparent. Eh? So we need to get that same kind of an effect. So the first thing that I'm going to do is look and see what can I see through the wing. For example, let's Let's get a closer view of that again. Yeah, let's go to there. For example, here, I'm going to just sketch in for myself the, the back of that abdomen piece on the body bit. Just so I don't know where they end, because I can see underneath all of that some of this shining through. So I need to put them in. There, it's lighter over there, but obviously not as light. So that's already half of that done. And there's this guy, he's coming up darker around this vicinity over here. And there I see another little darker patch also just sort of tying in with with whatever's happening on the body. Cool. Now let's go back to here. Let's get that tonal value correct over there. He goes to there. And then this guy here is lighter over there. 
And as it curls around over here, it becomes a little bit darker. Get that total value in. And let's see here. There's a nice little highlight running along there. But along this guy, there's a little dark bit. There's like sort of, what would you call it? Veins or ribs. Inside those wings. So I'm going to put them in more or less where I, where I see them. There's another little wing over there, so I'm just going to do that. And then there's some highlights and stuff as well. Alright, so let's first get these tonal values right. It's darker here. Then it does go a little bit lighter. Because from this point on, we can't see what's going on underneath. You, It's too obscured by the... There's another little light, thin little line over there. It's too obscured by the wings. So it's purely tonal value work at this point. Can you see they're starting to look transparent already because of the, the little hard edges and stuff that you've got, those little dark bits? And a little bit of body stuff that's shining through. Yeah, I think that's cool for now. Let's go back to the jelly roll pen. And let's start adding some of these little reflective bits. Because that's also giving us a very distinct definition. There's this guy over here. So you have to be patient when you're doing longer lines like this with a jelly roll pen. Sometimes they don't, they don't want to come out because you've got lots of graphite over here. So just keep at it. They will gradually build. What I often do is I'll, I'll do a little bit, and then I'll stop. If I see the, the ink is not coming off, I'll stop. And let that little bit that has come off dry. And then once it's dried, you, now you're doing ink over ink. And you'll find it comes off again. And also, can you see what I'm doing here on the side? Let's get rid of that little overlay for a second. The, the pen gradually picks up graphite and then it doesn't want to write anymore. So then you just clean the, the tip off on a, on a clean piece like that. Yeah, let's pop our overlay back so that you can see what's what's what. There's lots of little highlights here. Quite a lot of little highlights. So I'm gonna put a lot of them in. Because they're also gonna just help with that shininess of the wings as well. Those reflections and whatnot.
Okay, let's take a look. We also be here. Haven't we done our our pen work yet? Put a few overlapping the over overlapping the legs. I think we, we're mostly done with the with the detail work. Here's just a few little extra little highlights and things that we haven't added to these little feelers yet. So I'm just dabbing and tapping them in. Kind of dabbing and tapping a bit more of that feeler in in between those hairs over there, just to indicate that they're going in between. And where else? Here's a few little lines and things that we haven't added yet. Sparkly bits. So there's no really, just... Lovely detail work that we're doing now. I think we're actually at a point where you'd you'd actually want to to turf the the reference and just start evaluating your drawing on its own merit because you've got the likeness already you you you're already there. Let's do that. Let's evaluate this guy on his own merits now. Okay, so I'm looking at the eye and I'm seeing he's not quite standing out as much as I'd like him to. So I'm going to just continue adding more tonal value to that. Because obviously your eye is the most important bit. That's the bit you're looking at when you... When you're looking at him. There we go. That's more solid there now. Alright, so here we've got some flowers and stuff happening, eh? I don't think we're going to worry too much about drawing an actual flower effect. Just going to pick up some graphite. And I'm just going to lay down some very random shapes and marks very random and see i'm just rubbing this way that way we want to do this just really quick nobody's looking at this let's get that corner dark let's get this corner dark Now I'm going to just give this guy a secondary layer. It's just so that we can pick up more graphite. There's hardly any graphite left there now. So this is a silk bee. I'm not sure which country they endemic of. It didn't show in the that kind of detail wasn't in the in the reference photos information, unfortunately. So here underneath the the B, I'm gonna darken up because he's now you can think of it this way, as this is his cast shadow. It just adds that bit of a 3D 
feel to automatically. Okay, just give me a second to get the um, the overlay sorted for the for the flower. See if I can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's popping down over there. That should be good enough. So can you see it's almost just like popcorn? <laughs> so I'm going to take my my kneaded eraser. And let's create a popcorn effect. All you're trying to do is just. Okay, there at the back, everything's out of focus. I actually, I think I'll use the, the back of that. And then I'll sharpen up this point over here. Here at the back, we'll just, just tap. So that'll just create a few little random shapes at the back there. Then here, here we want a little bit more detail. So I'm going to use the, the tip of it. Just drag out and lift out just a random little shapes and things. What it really is is just differences in contrast. So I can see everything over here is a little bit more in focus. I'll add a few more distinct goodies lifting out over there and some goodies over here. So every now and again I'm just folding this guy over. Hmm. Guys, if you're enjoying the lesson, you haven't subscribed, this is uh, my new channel, so just make sure that you have subscribed as well, because I am loading other videos on here as well, besides the just the classes. So just hit the subscribe and the bell icon, and you know what to do. Okay, just a few little goodies like that. And now we can take our kneaded eraser, oh sorry, our... Um, a, a tombow. But can you see how quickly we got that um, texture over there? Really quick, hey? Right. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. I'm not interested in drawing all sorts of flowers, just the strategic ones like here. Can you see this little bit over here is hiding where that little mouth or whatever it is goes in behind the flowers so I'm, I'm adding him here i've got some stuff that's also hiding there that foot so i'm looking for those strategic guys there i can only see a piece of the foot so i'm going to have to put something over there that's now distinct and and obs definitely obscuring that i wonder if i can even use a, a larger eraser just a standard go like this for some of these guys and that should go even quicker okay so look here i'm just working in a few little abstract shapes and things and it's just going to suggest let's get rid of those crumbs and you'll see it look there it's just suggesting all this detail meantime there is nothing <laughs> It just it's just an illusion. Same as everything else on the paper for that matter. Everything's just an illusion. Yeah, let's maybe work out just one or two little goodies over here. I'm not even using the picture anymore to be honest, I can turf that. <laughs> I'm just working out little random shapes and goodies. Some stuff.
wiggles and squiggles, just some highlights and whatnot. Okay, so just a last look over and see, did I not accidentally go over any of these guys or does something need to be just made a bit more prominent like there, this guy is not overlapping properly, so he needs to have a nice distinct overlap over there. Now I don't know where this ends, I can get that nice and sharp. Like that. Anywhere else? Let me know if you see something that I've that I've missed. Just one or two little extra hairs over there and over here. Now that we know where this these flower goodies are. That's fine. He's not quite a hairy fella. Yes, yeah, so I never did show you when let's say you've put that in over there and it's now too bright. So then all you do is just take just take your blending stump and just pick up some to some graphite on it and now you can go over that and you can tone it down can you see there that's now not as as bright as that anymore so toning down stuff is, is not a problem you can't get all the way back to black anymore once you've gone over an area with the jelly roll but you can definitely um, Get little tonal value shadings and stuff. Not a problem. Okay, guys, so all I'm doing now is just having a quick little glance over. Now is a good time when you want to just stand back. Just have a quick glance over your tonal values and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think just here a little bit the forehead is not quite defined as much as what we'd like and now he's standing out. Now you can sort of see the the whole head over there between or through the hairs. Yeah, so let's go to there. I think we'll call it a day on that guy. I'm pretty happy with that. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Good luck with your bee. I'll see you next time. Guys, thanks for joining me in the live class. You must have yourself a wonderful weekend. And don't forget, if you are a patron, go and uh, hop onto the Have Your Say page and go and tell me what classes I must make for you next. Take care and have yourself a wonderful weekend.